What's up, brother? All right, we are finally live. Sorry about that. You got a great background. You got like a wood, funky, like cool bar thing. I got the natural, insane, multitasking thing going on here. Yeah, you got yours is a hell of a lot cooler than mine. This is about a this is about an eighty dollar job with a handyman that makes it makes it cool for video. But I would much rather be outside enjoying my kids. That believe me. Well, I'm in. Uh, I'm sure you can relate to this, but I have four kids under ten, and it's just my wife and I. We're in divide and conquer mode, so it's like multitasking now is like quadruple tasking. I got my <laughs> eyes on these lunatics. I'm talking to you and focused on you. I got to watch her. And, and it's just, you know, I think everybody's in the same space where it's just a new reality and new rules and new time frames. So I ain't that the truth. What it is. So I, po I apologize for the distractions. No, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm honored that you're here. I'm glad that you were able to carve out some time and excited we get to spend a few minutes together. Um, and like I said, I really appreciate you doing this. We're going to we're gonna have a little bit of fun here for a few minutes. I'll, I'll be very respectful of your time here, but guys, if you don't know, I, I, as you're coming on, do me a favor. Hold on, let me kill that. As, um, if you guys don't know Jesse Isler, then you are clearly missing out. This guy is a truly a phenomenon. I'm, I'm honored that I get to call him a friend. We've had the, the uh, privilege of having him come and speak at uh, several of our live events where he has always just stole the show, delivered so much value, inspired so many people. He's a you know, he's a nationally recognized speaker. He's a best-selling author. He's, you know, CEO and founder of multiple companies. Uh, and just, again, has inspired millions and millions of people to kind of step up and, and effectively start living their best life, collecting moments instead of collecting bullshit. And um, I love it about him. I mean, if you're not following him on Instagram, you should be. I mean, it, it, you guys, Jesse, it's, um, you're phenomenal, brother. And uh, I, I want to let you know how much I appreciate you being here again. Oh, man. Well, listen, when I first started out, you and your family gave me an opportunity to come speak and not knowing much about me or my message or, and just kind of said, you know, we trust you do your thing. And that's led to Tony Robbins stages and other stuff. And I just super grateful for all you've done for me, man. It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks dude. I appreciate that. Well, let's, let's kind of jump into it again. I want to be really respectful of your time. Uh, we got a, we got a jam packed day here with all of our people. Um, so let's talk about kind of the current environment. You just hit on it, right? I mean, a lot of people are kind of having to adjust to new norms. Uh, a lot of people are kind of having to figure out, you know, what key pivots are going on, what they can be doing in their business, in their life, et cetera. How, what are, what are you, you know, the people that, that trust you and look to you and, and, and including in your own businesses, kind of what are some of the key adjustments you're, that you're advising people to make or that you're making? Well, you know, everybody's on their own journey and everybody has a different, thing going on, whether you have a family or you're single. But I think for me, the biggest thing is, you know, uh, when this first went down and people were quarantined at home, uh, immediately I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have so much time. I'm going to, I'm not commuting. There's no more business meetings. I'm going to write a book this week. I'm going to write a whole book in one week. I'm going to do my documentary week two. I'm going to organize all my family photos this week. I've done nothing. Because the reality is, no, the reality is I have four kids. My wife and I, you know, are now all of a sudden we're arguing when we weren't arguing because we're so tight about anything. The world has shifted. And um, I realized that I put so much pressure on myself. You tell me if I'm wrong. If you're listening, you tell me if you have the same thing. I put so much pressure on myself in, in, to do so much because I said, oh, I'm home. And all the experts are telling me, now you're home and you have to be so get so much done in your home and you should be doing all this and being so productive. Of course you have to be productive, but I don't need extra pressure. I have enough pressure worrying about my parents that are old and worrying about the virus and keeping my kids safe. I don't, I couldn't handle that kind of pressure. And every day for the first 10 days, I was beating myself up that I hadn't written. I didn't write the whole book. In fact, I didn't write one page and started thinking like I'm failing at this. And then I took a step back. And I said to myself, this is ridiculous. I've been busting my fucking ass, man, for 51 years. If I want to take a couple of days and be with my family and slow it down and realize what's important to me, that's okay. And what I did is I simplified my whole process and I made a grid. I actually share it with everybody. I love this. Um, the grid is just April. We, we know we're locked down for 30 days. The president just said so. We're locked down, man. 
I made a grid April 1, April 30, every day. And I have three simple buckets. My business, my family and friends, and my wellness. And every day before I go to bed in April, my wife and I fill in one of those boxes, each of those boxes, with at least one thing that we've done to move the needle in those categories. So instead of feeling I gotta, like I gotta climb Mount Everest this week, I could just be like, you know what? I sent five emails today for work. I drank 100 ounces of water for my wellness. I called my parents to check in. And as long as I have no empty boxes in April, it was a hell of a month. And that's sort of how I'm approaching it. I've taken a lot of the pressure of I have to accomplish so much just because I'm home and I have more time. Actually, I have less time. I'm homeschooling four kids, you know? So, um, and that's how I've approached it. And it's worked really, really well for me. I love that, dude. I mean, you know what? I mean, it, it, actually, when I hear you say that, it really doesn't, it actually doesn't surprise me that that's the way you do it because I know, uh, I know enough about you we, and, and spent enough time, you know, watching you online and certainly spending time with you that you have a way of, of thinking and boiling things down into, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I want to call it simple, but very straightforward approach to stuff, right? Where it's just like, look, this is what I've got to do. This is how I'm going to do it. I don't really give a shit about any of the outside distractions, any outside noise. I mean, even like your, your calendar club last month. I mean, that was, for those of, that, for those of you that didn't see that, can you, can you share what you did? I mean, that was unbelievable. And, the fun, and not the yeah, fun To your point, I feel like usually, you know, there's so much advice and wisdom out there. And a lot of it's good. But I always found that like when, unless it's medical advice, when it comes to like business, a lot of times everyone's pushing the same message right? And that message is we should have more family dinners during this time. And we should have, you know, accomplished so much. Of course, man, that's so fucking obvious. I mean, like you got to, you're an expert and that's, what you, everybody knows that. But the reality is if you just chip away, the key to this quarantine for me is consistency. It's not like, oh, I'm going, I need to change the world in 30 days. It's consistency. So let me give you an example about this. If every day in April, you send 10 business emails, okay? And, um, or 10 emails to friends and family. At the end of the month, you'll have sent 300 texts, DMs, or emails, or handwritten letters. That's a lot of reach. And, you know, the way I'm approaching this, Ken, I just want to get this thought out of my mind, then I'll answer your question. Yeah, no, no, no. This, is an, oppor this is an opportunity to me. I take inventory, man. I'm taking inventory on the friends that are checking in on me, the people that are reaching out to me, you know, and this is an opportunity to be a great human, charitable, reaching out, supporting friends and family. And at the end of this, when my friends take inventory, I want them to look at me, to look and have my name on somebody that stepped up, you know? I want to look back and be like, man, Jesse called me. He did this. He did that. Um, this is the time where great where humans become great humans. You know, it's a defining moment, man. And I take that super seriously. I love that. Um, I to love go that. back to, to go to go, what was your question again, Kent? So, I mean, you're, I want to, to people, I mean, again, just oh, to illustrate club. this point about the calendar club, right? I mean, I was, I yeah. mean, cause it's very yeah. indicative of the way you, you approach things. Like you said, just chipping away at stuff. Yeah. Uh, last month, I set up a challenge for myself where every day I, in February, I ran the amount of miles that corresponds to the day. February 1, one mile. February 15, 15 miles. 16, 17, 18, 18 miles. All the way till the end. So it's 435 miles. I think it's like, I think it's eight or nine marathons the last six or seven days. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm a big believer in doing things that make yourself proud. You know, I think it's really important at the end of the day, when I live in the monastery with the monks and I came home and someone asked me what, you know, how I felt, the first thing that came out of my mouth with no thought was proud and proud that I finished and proud that I challenged myself and proud that I explored. And um, um, that's, that's how I want to come out of this time period. Proud of myself of how I handle it as a dad. You know, here's my son right here. Hey, Lincoln. Um, you know, and, and making sure that I'm investing time in the right things. And what I found in this crisis is it's like, you remember Wonder Woman? 
when one that so put around people and pulled it, it told the truth. This is like, this, this pandemic is like the magic lasso where all the things that are important to you kind of, and all the emotions, they just naturally come to the surface because I don't think anyone in the world isn't scared on some level, freaked out, losing business. I mean, maybe a handful of people, but it's all of a sudden our schedules have been upended from us and the certainty of, um, you know, meetings, picking up your kids at four o'clock and all this different stuff, the certainty has been turned upside down. And now we are in charge of our own time and our own schedule. Um, it's just a really unusual time. Uh, well, and, yeah. No, what I was going to say is, you know, the Warren Buffett saying, I think is, is, you know, when the tide rolls out, you get to see real quick who's, who's swimming naked, right? I mean, it's kind of that, like you're, you, this, you're about to figure out what's really important to you. To your point, you're about to figure out exactly what kind of what you're made of. Uh, and I don't mean that in any kind of negative way, but to your point, you want to come out of this proud. You want to come out the best version of yourself that you possibly can. You want to be right. able to look back on it. Right. That's how I feel. And I really do feel like that. Um, so it's, it's, it's crazy. And like, look, I'm in the house, man. I have less time. I'm homeschooling four kids under 10. Uh, all of a sudden when my, you know, when my kids were at school all day, now I have to watch them because my wife and I are dividing all of our responsibilities, the dishes, the cleaning, the homework, the homeschooling, the bathing. It's all with four kids, man. It's like, I have no time. So right. I have to be mega efficient. What I'm doing to be mega efficient is I'm setting up my day the night before. So I'm investing five minutes the night before to make sure that my, my day is planned. Um, and I'm, I'm, this is really interesting. The average American commutes about 26.1 miles a day, uh, a, a minutes to work and 26.21 minute home from work. So 52 minutes basically of commute time, 52 minutes a day. If it's an hour a day, that's 10 hours a week in a car, train, bus, or subway. And I've just kind of rededicated my commute time, commute time, and I'm just taking those 52 minutes every day for myself. So I make sure that every day I have 52 minutes for myself. And that could look like a Wim Hof breathing for 10 minutes, a 20 minute walk, watching um, maybe a short documentary or whatever, but I'm making sure that I take an hour for myself, but I, I have to be really efficient with my time. So um, I plan it the night before. I make sure I have a dedicated place that I go to at home for work. So I, it allows me to be really present. So I know when I go to my desk, I am where my feet are. I'm not thinking about like, this is my work, two hours of work, I'm locked in. And then, you know, the rest of the day is really just like, man, managing my kids. So right. it's, really, it's really been challenging. So when you plan the night before, are you literally like uh, time blocking? Hey, this is work time. This is work out time. This is Jesse time. This is, are you the best you can? Yeah. I made a promise to my wife that I would be done with work most days, you know, by 10 a.m. So, um, and then I'd take an hour in the afternoon for myself, like, which is, you know, usually I run three hours a day. I work, you know, like usually normal day, I'm working out or run two or three hours a day. A little right. bit in the afternoon, and then the and that's really it. And I schedule the most important things first. So the things that you know for my business that make me money, that provide value to my customers, they get prioritized, and everything else you know comes after that. You know, look, business is simple: make it, sell it; make it, sell it; make it, sell it; promote it; make it, sell it; promote it; make it, sell it; promote it; repeat. And when you eliminate all the fake meetings and all the other stuff. And you just focus on those three things, you know, telling the story, making it, telling the story and selling it. Great things are going to happen. And I love going back to the basics because this has forced me to have calls and this and that and really just focus on the three principles that have made me successful. I love that, dude. I love it. And I love how simple it is and straightforward and extremely practical, extremely um you know, actionable for everybody on here, right? Don't overcomplicate it. Like get, get down into it and get done what needs to get done right now, right? But whatever you do, don't take your foot off the gas. Yeah. You know, Kent, if I was, if this happened to me, I was thinking about this when I was my kid's age. So if this pandemic happened to me when I was 10 years old, 
I had five TV ch channels when I was 10 years old. I had ABC, CBS, NBC, Channel 9 and Channel 11 in New York. That was it. And I had encyclopedias. That was all I had. And yeah. I had a backyard. I didn't have Netflix and devices and video games and all this other access to all this stuff. So if this happened when I was 10 years old, you know, and I was a kid or a parent, even if I was my parents, it would have really forced me to have a different existence that I have now. So we're really lucky that we live in an age where during this pandemic, we have access to so much learning and so many tools, tools like what you're doing now, interviewing, you know, people and various thought leaders, yep. Instagram and YouTube. So, you know, just staying active a little bit every day, but being consistent with it, you can really learn and, and, and accomplish a lot without putting the pressure on yourself of, you have so much time today, can't you? You don't commute, you're home alone. You should be doing, you should launch seven new businesses. It's too much pressure right now for that, man. Dude, I love that. And, and so, the, the, just so everybody's out there, right? The message here is, it's just the consistency, right? Carve out the time that you need to carve out, but do it in a consistent, methodical, intentional way over and over and over again. By the way, guys, over on the comment section here, if you guys are finding value out of this, do me a favor. And uh, give me a hell yeah over there. Let Jesse hear you in the comments so that we both uh, know that you guys are there digging what we're talking about here. Jesse, let's shift gears for one second because I know um, how big, um, it, at least outside looking in, right? I mean, how big it is to, to personally and professionally and physically challenge yourself. Uh, I hear you talk about it. I mean, I know that 2929 has kind of been born out of that. And, and so, so talk about th this element of pushing yourself, um, again, outside of the pandemic, kind of wh what that means to you and why you believe that's so important in these, these physical challenges. Yeah, well, I mean, you've heard me mention that, and I have a business around this, that I'm a big believer in building your life resume more than your traditional resume. And I think we tend to overemphasize the importance of resume and we neglect the importance of a life resume, which is really what's important at the end of the day. And I've always found that by challenging myself, those are the best, obviously the best learning experiences and opportunities. They make me, those challenges make me feel the most alive. And I learn the most about myself. And, um, and it makes me feel proud. So I, I, you know, I'm an endurance guy. I'm not an adrenaline junkie. I don't like to jump out of airplanes, but I like to push myself because when the, a, a, a endurance events and challenges are really just tests of will. I'm not trying to win the race. I'm trying to finish the race. So that's a gut check. And that taps into the same DNA and the same courage and will that businesses take. I know you have a lot of business folks on it. here it's the it. same muscle and i found that if i can really push myself physically those tools that i use those skills that i learn those mantras that i tell myself i can apply them to parenting business relationships patience everything so i try to add at least now like once a quarter shit it's almost like once a month right a, a, a big challenge um and not, not everything I'm telling the world what I'm doing, but it could be as simple as now I'm in this big cold plunge thing. I just jumped into, I posted on Instagram. I went to a waterfall. I cracked a hole in the ice in the middle of Montana. I jumped in. People were looking at me like I was nuts. The next day I come back, six people are there doing it. <laughs> Cause it no, because it's contagious. It's right. infectious. And people realize there's more to life than nine to five jobs. And well, what did you get out of jumping into a, a waterfall? What are you, crazy? It was freezing and you took an ax and you broke a hole and, and you made a hole and you jumped into it. Yeah, I actually sat under the, the glacier cold waterfall. I'll tell you what I got out of it. The fear, the adrenaline, the feeling of I did it, not telling myself I can't, but I will. All these little lessons that come up, they're just building blocks for everything else. And it just, because, so for me, it's just a contagious part of the way that I live my life that permeates into all the different buckets. It's the foundation of my business journey, man. You know, I got a thousand on my SAT. My father was a plumbing, owned the plumbing supply house in, in Mineola, Long Island. 
Um, my parents didn't know, have any connections. I had to do it my, on my own. And, you know, every time I hit a roadblock, it was the only reason why I became more successful is I just kept going. All my other partners, like, just didn't have the will. They dropped out. And I was just kept going until I found luck. I stayed in long enough that I found luck. I married that with a little bit of skill and some good ideas and, you know, a whole lot of things that fell into the right place for me. But without the will, my life is completely different. So I try to maintain that, sharpen that skill set by doing challenges. Dude, you know, that is um, sharpening the will. I think, you know, I've actually never heard it put that way, but I think that is, that is a really powerful way to do that to flex that muscle, the will to just keep pushing. Because to, to your point, it's applicable everywhere, right? Especially as you get older, you got to sharpen your will because it's easy, it's easy to get comfortable. Listen, <laughs> look at this, man. I didn't have this growing up. I'm in a house with cars and bikes and yards. And, you know, it's easy to get comfortable. It's easy to be like, I want to go into the air conditioner. You know, um, I never think about my past, Ken. I never think about... I don't own a marquee jet hat. I don't own a Zico coconut water hat. I don't have all these pictures with people in my, like, I just, I'm a forward, I look through the forward mirror of my life. I say I'm 50 years old, 51 now. Maybe I live another 30, 40 years, it's fucking nothing. And all I think about is how do I maximize that, that time forward? And, and, and that's it. I don't celebrate, oh, I did this. Oh, I, I'm, I'm this. I don't. Nobody cares who won, who won the NBA championship last year. They're talking about this year. Who's going to win next year? So that's how I live my life. So po- stockpiling adventure and challenges. I know you're participating in one. Building your life resume. Those are the, what are you doing, Charlie? I got it. Those are the things myself. I got it. Those are the things that are important to me. And, um, you know, I'm a capitalist. I want to make money. I love building businesses, but at the end of the day, I never neglect that spirit of living a life. I mean, look, you live on the water, you're in La Jolla, you know, um, I'm sure you take time every day to smell the roses and, and recognize where you are and enjoy Amen, the buddy. scenery, you know, and um, this crisis, I don't like to use the word crisis, this pandemic, because crisis gives power to the situation. And it creates a, uh, an environment in my house and with my kids that I don't want to create. It's an opportunity. The pandemic has brought these emotions up front of what is important. I don't miss basketball games. I don't TV. I don't miss meetings. You know, I miss like seeing my friends. I miss the races that I did last year. I miss being able to see my parents. I miss, you know, like it all, all the, it's like the true serum comes to the top and for me it's important to be able to act on this on that when this is over it's taking the lessons and the emotions of what has come from this and making sure that you act on it to make changes forward because i only got 30 or 40 years left man no doubt brother i'm not i'm not a 15 year old kid anymore so you know as you get older there's a new appreciation in this kind of stuff it's crazy and and I, i i'll just say this too you know I'm very lucky, man. We're all lucky. We have, I have a roof. I got enough food. You know, I have some money saved up. I'm in a great spot to weather the storm. A lot of people aren't. And, you know, I don't think, there's not a day that goes by where I don't think about that. We're doing a lot to, you know, around that locally. And my wife's about to make a massive announcement about something she's doing. Um, um, but, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. I don't know. But anyway, no, I mean, oh, oh, here, here, no, here it is, here it is, here it is. But I still have the same issues that everybody has. My wife is on top of me and I'm on top of her like we've never been before because we're trapped in a house and the dishes and the kids and this. My kids are running around. I got to make sure that I think my daughter has a box of cheese that she just smuggled out of the house. I got to make sure she doesn't eat them all. It's like it's all going down and everybody's dealing with the same, you know, stressors in different ways. And um, 
We just got to make sure that Pepper, uh uh, um, my message is to be consistent in April. Don't feel the pressure of this whole thing and feel like you have to accomplish everything quickly or, or solve the world's problems because you're home. Be consistent and be a great human. It's a time to really step up and, and let your friends know you're thinking about them. So when this thing, when the dust settles, you're up here. Everybody else is here and you've, you've risen to here because of the opportunity, not the crisis, the opportunity that we all have. I did. I love that message. I love that. I couldn't have, I literally couldn't have said it any better. You know that that's kind of um, where you and I have been in alignment for so long. I mean, literally, I, I just turned 50 as well. And my motto for many, many years has been the time is now, you know, focus on the moments, collect moments, don't collect shit, just kind of staying in the vein and take one day at a time and be very, very present. And so uh, you're singing, you, you know, you're, you're speaking my language, brother. And I, and this message, it, it, I know it resonates with our entire tribe here. I know that you've got, um, uh, your build your life resume uh, program kicking off, right? You, and, and I know you've got a gift where you're trying to get, you know, a lot of people to get engaged here. You want to talk about it for a minute? Yeah, I have this, I've been doing this program called Build Your Life Resume. It's basically 50 years of my best practices in business, mindset, wellness that I've kind of put together uh, in eight different, six to eight different video lessons. And I, thousands of people have gone through this. I offered it at you know all these different conferences. We've sold it, but I've made a complimentary this month for organizations and people that I've spoken to, you being one of them. So if anybody here wants a great, short, at home, 14 day, kind of 20 minutes every other day video, you can access them whenever you want. My wife, Sarah, who's the founder of Spanx, does an amazing exclusive kind of one-on-one -on -one business I mean, it's almost like a semester of college of business in like 20 minutes. She does a lesson. Um, we've discussed that we would make it available for free um, to, your, to your tribe. So I'm happy to do that. You can send that. And also anybody, um, uh, that's another thing. Like I've made everything free now. I just can't fathom, you know, you have to handle everything with sensitivity. Right. Um, and, and being aware of what everyone else is going through during this time. So everything for me right now has been charity or free, and I feel that's fine. When it's time to go back, I'll go back. Anybody that wants my grid for April, where I've laid out the days and put three simple boxes, family and friends, business, wellness, and you just fill out the grid, um, I'll give Kent a number to text, or I'll, I'll give it to you guys. Just You just text 33777. You can write it down, Kent. 33777, and type in the subject line, B Y L R at home, and I'll send you the grid. It's just a PDF. I'm not. There's no upsell. There's no. This is just right. a grid, um, and um, it's a really good way to to manage your mo monitor your progress in April. So those are two things for your tribe. The B Y L R course, which is amazing. It's usually like four ninety nine, and then and then the grid. So totally Good. optional but it's out there if anybody wants it the I will, class starts tomorrow yeah yeah i will make sure that it is in the comments here guys i will put the link you will be able to click right on it go right there get signed up like jesse said it starts tomorrow i highly recommend it i'm signing up for it i would also send the text um and then um you know if you if you are not following jesse online it's at jesse itzler on instagram jesse is that the best way for people to follow you is on instagram yeah and i check dms i check everything myself Guys, I mean, do yourself a favor. This guy, I mean, he's literally one of the best human beings I know. He's, he's always been there for me. I text him, he responds back. We sit there, we have conversation. He inspires me every single day. Uh, I have nothing but love and respect for, for him and his family. And, um, and do yourself a favor and go follow him and you'll, and you'll see exactly why. There's, there's just not a better human being out there. And dude, thank you for carving, taking the time out. I know you're trying to watch your kids there and everything else. I really appreciate you doing this for our tribe today. And I'll make sure that I get uh, one. I'll make sure I email my entire list to get them signed up for a build your life resume. And I'll make sure in the comments, everybody gets signed up as well, dude. Thank you very much. Great on all. And listen, I don't know how you got this. You got an all-star lineup. I saw the lineup that you have. I was like, whoa, how'd you pull this together so fast? Say hi dude, to Weatherford. I know, I I know Weatherford's coming up and some others. Um, you got a great mix, you know, and that's really important, right? To just bring in as many different, people always say, you know, surround yourself with like-minded people. And I always say, why? 
You're going to learn like-minded things. You want to learn from people that aren't like-minded. That's where you grow. You bring in all these different pools of people with different backgrounds, different yeah. tricks, you know, different tricks up their sleeve. And then the listener says, okay, what resonates with me? And you grab, you know, and you, you, you whatever sticks, sticks or whatever doesn't, you chuck it out. So well, I love that you're putting together this group. It's diverse. Yeah, dude, that's the way I grew, man. That's the way I've grown my businesses. There's a lot of things that don't, you know, the people, you know, real estate's real estate, but there's a lot of other great ideas out here that I can take and bring them into real estate. And, you know, I, I took 48 hours and made a few texts and a few messages and everybody's willing to pitch in, including yourself. And I'm extremely grateful to everybody. So brother, I appreciate you. Tell Sarah hi and uh, we'll talk soon. Okay, it sounds good, Kent. Be good, man. Take care, everybody. Stay, stay, stay home. Take care. Guys, right. say, uh, let him know you love him over there in the comments. See ya.